go. For the way it makes sense, at least. You're not recording, right? I am. Am I required to talk every shift? No. Okay. But this one, for sure. <laughs> I'm Jamila. I'm from Atlanta. I am here because I love food, and I love how food and people relate. I have a business called Wild Indigo, and it is an experiential dining experience that aims to teach people like me, black people, um, like food education, like agroecology, how food relates to us and the food system um, in like its totality and where we are in it. Wild Indigo, the goal is to teach people like me yeah people like me what the food system looks like food education like food justice you know get into some like things we can do to advocate for our own food systems and the sovereignty within it someone that inspired me to get into food was probably my father and experiencing his illness and wanting to do something about it and wanting to ensure that he was healthy. And so, um, unfortunately he passed, but when I would try to look up things, I would just kind of look up cures for things. And one thing that I kept noticing or coming into was like Dr. Sabi and, you know, finding, you know, just like, he really emphasized how food was very important in our healing and what we needed. So <laughs> after being vegetarian for some time, um, I just wanted, I noticed how like the food was still kind of processed, even still, and I really just wanted to be able to eat you know, real fruit food. I lived in LA for a while and that was like kind of my first experiences with like farmer's markets and seeing fresh food. Although like where I'm from in Georgia, they had them. For some reason, it just wasn't as a part, much a part of the culture, at least on the side of town where I was from. And so being in LA kind of helped expose me to that. Even hanging out with some friends that would just take me to farmer's markets and stuff there. Um, and that's when I started to cook more, really get into like culinary and like the art of it and really like making food taste good and it be healthy for, like for you. So um, yeah, that experience I would say kind of helped to, I guess, guide me towards what wild indigo and the farm all that stuff so I moved to Brooklyn and <laughs> then I got more into gardening and like I started volunteering at a community garden because I really wanted to get really intimate with my food and see like where it came from like how it's grown like what it needs like um, you know that story kind of teaches me about myself in a way so then I volunteering at the community garden cooking the pandemic happened so I spent even more time just cooking my own food and gardening that's pretty much what I did to pass the time and I don't know one day I was just like I can never stop this like this is something I want to do like all the time I can't imagine another summer like not growing something or like being involved in that like I don't know it would it would just suck so um at least for me <laughs> so yeah, I decided I wanted to get way more involved in food and in the food system and like in envisioning a new way like we could experience food or like, you know, a way that could be more sustainable and good for the people and the planet and our health. And I decided to move back to Atlanta because I wanted a longer growing season and it was so cold in New York and you know I just couldn't deal with that all the time and I wanted to have this space and time to focus on the culinary space I believe Atlanta was like very it's a good place to start a business so 
I was like, I'm gonna go back to where, I, where I'm from and like really focus on that community. And like, since, you know, I remember not necessarily having that access and that experience when I was in Atlanta. <laughs> so <laughs> I realized that I wanted to start a farm to table, like dining experience that is kind of adaptable kind of modeled after the environment, like how it always changes and adapts and, you know, make sure things stay in balance. Um, and in order to do that, I felt that I should probably learn how food is grown in a productive way, like a high yield, especially enough to be able to supply a restaurant. I went to school, took some herbalism classes, and I went to school for horticulture. If you do not wish to be in the war, you should leave now. No. Do you love your country? to learn more about growing food um, especially having like a if I wanted a farm to table space and I wanted it to be sustainable um, yeah I felt like I had to learn it so I started taking classes horticulture classes at um, Gwinnett Tech after you know gardening for a few years I wanted to really learn how to do a productive yield so I went to school for a semester, I took a class about small scale food production. You know, I was learning that and then, you know, the semester ended, I wanted to keep learning. And so I decided to get a job at a ecological landscaping company um, that kind of focused on creating landscapes that were good for the environment, including food and like the landscaping and stuff like that. Worked in a restaurant and then I, stop working there <laughs> yeah I wanted to do something that I felt like I could do for a while and enjoyed and I felt like I was contributing to something so I was looking for work and I came to the farmers market like usual I told Nicole and Eugene that I was looking for work and you know four months later here we are how to cut a watermelon I didn't pick this one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh huh. You tell me something. I mean. What is the value of beauty? It makes the job enjoyable to look at something that is beautiful. You want to spend time around it. Um, and farming and gardening, I think a beautiful like crop or like produce definitely is good for you know um, economical reasons. And <laughs> what else? The value of beauty. Hmm. My name is Jamila McWhorter. I am from Atlanta, Georgia, and my business is called Wild Indigo. Mm -hmm. 